We will evaluate the given trig expressions using the reference triangles shown below. The first expression is inverse cosine of cosine pi over 3. Since pi over 3 is equal to 60 degrees, we can evaluate this first expression using the 30, 60, 90 reference triangle shown here. Since cosine theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, cosine pi over 3, or cosine 1 third pi radians, is equal to 1 divided by 2, which is equal to 1 half. The expression simplifies to inverse cosine of 1 half. Inverse cosine of 1 half is equal to the angle in the closed interval from 0 to pi radians, or in the first or second quadrant, for which the cosine function value is 1 half. And since we just found that cosine pi over 3, or cosine 1 third pi radians, is equal to 1 half, and 1 third pi radians is in the closed interval from 0 to pi radians, the expression simplifies to 1 third pi radians. For the next expression, we have inverse cosine of cosine 11 sixth pi radians, because this angle is not in the first quadrant, or one of the angles from the reference triangles, we will have to sketch the angle in standard position, determine the reference angle, and the corresponding reference triangle. So we begin by sketching 11 sixth pi radians in standard position, which is 1 sixth pi radians short of 2 pi radians, and therefore if we rotate counterclockwise, we have 3 sixth pi radians, 6 sixth pi radians, 9 sixth pi radians, and 11 six pi radians would terminate here with a counterclockwise rotation. And more importantly, the reference angle, this angle here, is 1 sixth pi radians, or 30 degrees. And now let's sketch the reference triangle. Because we are in the fourth quadrant where x is positive and y is negative, this opposite leg is negative 1, the hypotenuse is 2, and the longer leg is positive square root of 3. And now using this reference triangle, we can determine the cosine of 11 6 pi radians, which is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which is positive square root of 3 divided by 2. This simplifies to inverse cosine of square root of 3 divided by 2. Here's where we have to be careful. Inverse cosine of square root of 3 divided by 2 is equal to the angle in the closed interval from zero to pi radians, or in the first or second quadrant, where the cosine function value is equal to square root of three divided by two. And remember, cosine is positive in the first quadrant and negative in the second quadrant, and because we have a positive cosine function value to evaluate this, we will sketch a 30 degree reference angle, or a reference angle of pi over six radians in the first quadrant. So the initial side is here. The terminal side is this ray. Again, where the reference angle, this angle here, is three degrees, or in radians, one-sixth pi radians. And let's sketch the reference triangle to verify. We are in the first quadrant where both legs are positive. So we have one, two, square root three. Notice how this reference triangle does give a cosine function value of square root three divided by two for the angle to be in the closed interval from zero to pi radians, we now know the angle is 30 degrees, or in radians, pi over six, or one-sixth pi radians. Next we have inverse sine of sine of five-fourths pi radians. So we first sketch five-fourths pi radians in standard position. Rotating counterclockwise, we have one fourth pi, two fourths pi, three fourths pi, four fourths pi, and finally five fourths pi terminates here. We rotated one fourth pi radians past pi radians to determine this terminal side, and therefore we know the reference angle, this angle here is 45 degrees or one fourth pi radians. Let's sketch the reference triangle. Because we're in the third quadrant where both x and y are negative, both legs are negative one, the hypotenuse is square root two. The sine of five fourths pi radians is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, which is negative one divided by square root two. The expression simplifies to inverse sine of negative one divided by square root two. And again, here's where we have to be careful. 
inverse sine of negative one divided by square root two is equal to the angle in the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two that has a sine function value of negative one divided by square root two, which means the angle must be in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant, which is not the angle of five fourths pi radians. So now we will sketch a 45 degree reference angle in the fourth quadrant to determine what angle is in the interval that has this sine function value. We know it has to be in the fourth quadrant because sine is positive in the first and negative in the fourth, and we have a negative sine function value. And therefore the terminal side is here, where again the reference angle is still 45 degrees or one fourth pi radians. Let's sketch the reference triangle. We are in the fourth quadrant where x is positive and y is negative, and therefore the opposite leg is negative one, this leg is positive one, and then we have square root two for the hypotenuse. Notice how this reference triangle still gives us a sine function value of negative one divided by square root two, but for the angle to be in the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, the angle we are looking for is this angle here, which is negative 45 degrees or negative one fourth pi radians because we rotated clockwise. And then finally we have inverse sine of sine three halves pi radians. To evaluate sine of three halves pi radians, because this is a quadrantal angle, we will have to use a unit circle. So let's go ahead and sketch the angle in standard position. The initial side is here. Rotating counterclockwise, we have one half pi, two halves pi, three halves pi radians. This is the terminal side. Rotating counterclockwise for three halves pi radians. The terminal side intersects the unit circle at this point that has an ordered pair of zero comma negative one on the unit circle, x equals cosine theta and y equals sine theta, and therefore sine three halves pi radians is equal to negative one. This simplifies to inverse sine of negative one, which is equal to the angle in the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two that has a sine function value of negative one. So the terminal side must still intersect the unit circle at this point, but for the angle to be in this closed interval, we need to rotate clockwise and therefore the angle we are looking for is negative 90 degrees or negative pi over two radians or negative one half pi radians. I hope you found this helpful.